You're listening to Inner Guidance Channel. To think of the Bible's events as historical and the characters recorded there as persons such as you and I is to see truth tempered to the weakness of the human form, unable to stand the strong light of revelation. But I tell you, it is in us as persons that the nature of God is revealed. Paul tells us his conversion came through a revelation of Jesus Christ. It did not come through a man, thereby causing him to change religions. No. Paul never forsook Judaism, but interpreted the meaning of the Old Testament through revelation. But was Paul a person, an individual being such as you are, as I am? Or is he too one of these eternal characters? That is the question I am asking tonight. I tell you, all of the characters of Scripture, including Paul, are eternal states. One day, whether you be male or female, you will reach the state of Paul, and your journey in the world of death will come to its end. A friend of mine, a lady with two children and expecting her third, wrote, saying, In vision, I saw the Bible open to the New Testament and heard the words, You are Paul. I was so startled I broke the vision and awoke, questioning the words, I am Paul, I am Paul, I am Paul. The idea seemed too much for me to grasp, so I returned to sleep and the dream continued. I saw the entire New Testament opened at the book of Matthew, then an invisible hand moved the pages through the book of Revelation as I heard the words, It's all about Paul. So I ask you, who is Paul? Paul is a state you enter when, having been introduced to Christianity or Judaism, the secret behind the words is revealed. In the state of Paul, you discover you are the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. It is Paul who says, When it pleased God to reveal his Son in me, I conferred not with flesh and blood. When the vision is yours, to whom could you turn to ask what they thought of it? They would tell you that you were insane, so you would turn to no man. Rather, you would abide in the vision and dwell upon it. Paul's conversion did not change his religion, for he never forsook Judaism. His one disappointment was that he could not convince his fellow religionists of the truth of what had taken place in him. Paul represents every individual, be he male or female, who arrives at that point in time when he awakens to discover that the characters of Scripture did not exist in time and space, but are eternal spiritual states, which the individual moves through toward the climax, which is Jesus Christ. The fundamental story of Scripture is a metamorphosis, a complete change of form. Like the grub worm is transformed into the butterfly, so man, as we understand him, is turned into Jesus Christ. And when it happens in you, there is no one to whom you can turn. It is a fact you cannot deny. I could no more deny my experiences of Christ unfolding within me than I can deny the fact that I am standing before you now. And I am not unique. Christ will unfold in every child born of woman. He must, for God cannot and will not fail to fulfill his promise in all. The word Saul means to inquire, to ask. Entering the state of soul, you are questioning life, its purpose and plan. Is there a God? Why am I here? Saul's is a questing mind, one which is seeking an answer to the phenomena of life. Today is the wonderful day of atonement, which came to its end at sundown, with the singing of a great psalm in every synagogue which begins, Awake, O sleeper, who forgot eternity in the pursuit of the moment. Having forgotten that we are all one in eternity, we are called upon to awaken. But awaken from what? From the pursuit of the moment. Then, in the eternal state called Paul, the story of Jesus will unfold in you, and you too will say, From now on I regard no one from the human point of view. Even though I once regarded Christ from the human point of view, I regard him thus no longer. Like every Jew, Paul was looking for an external Messiah, 
one who would come to be the anointed king and save Israel from the enemy. Then he discovered the Messiah was within him and would never appear on the outside. Paul's 13 letters were written 20 years before the book of Mark, which was the first gospel. So Paul could not have quoted the New Testament, only the Old. He never converted in the sense of converting from Judaism to Christianity or Catholicism to Protestantism. After the revelation, Paul understood that which was revealed to the prophets, for he discovered that the Messiah which was to come was himself, saying, When it pleased God to reveal his Son in me, I conferred not with flesh and blood. There is a poem by Browning called Saul, in which David tells of the coming of the Messiah, saying, O Saul, it shall be a face like my face that shall receive thee. A man like unto me thou shalt love, and be loved by forever. A hand like this hand shall open the door to a new life for thee. See the Christ stand. Standing before the demented king, David is telling Saul that when he sees Christ, he will wear the face of David, that he will love and be loved by him forever. Extending his hand, David tells Saul that this knowledge will open the gate to a new life, for David is the only Christ Saul will ever see. When Christ stands before you, he will wear the face of David and reveal you as the Lord God Jehovah. Then you will say, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. This will be the experience of every child born of woman, for awareness, although limited by a garment of flesh and blood, restricted and weak, is God, the Father of all life, and there is no other God. Now, when Paul spoke of sin, he wasn't speaking of a little misdemeanor or even a big one. To Paul, if you are not radiating the glory of God and are not now the express image of his person, you are sinning and falling short of that glory. Only when you enter into the state called Paul will you radiate God's glory and express his image. For it is in that state that David reveals you to yourself. Paul confessed to the Galatians that God sent his son into his heart, crying, Father, and now I tell you that when David stood before me and called me Father, I saw him more vividly than I have ever seen anyone here. I can still see his heavenly beauty. I saw David in the year 1959, yet history claims he lived in 1000 BC. But David is not my flesh and blood son. He is part of the unfolding picture of an eternal story in which man is involved. The story, as recorded in the Old Testament, was not understood until it unfolded within one who said, I am a child of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Pharisee of the Pharisees. Paul never forsook Judaism, but tried to interpret it to those who would listen, but they could not understand. They were as they still are today, looking for a physical, external Messiah to destroy their enemies and establish his kingdom in this world. But that is not the story. This eternal truth is housed in every being who walks the earth. One day you will find Christ as your very being. You who say I am before you state your name will experience all of the eternal spiritual states spoken of and named in scripture to arrive at the final state called Paul. My friend knows she is Paul, for she heard the depth of her soul tell her so. To her the idea seemed incredulous, yet I tell her she heard correctly, for she has been called. She has been chosen and elected to be an incurrent eyewitness to the great truth which will unfold within her. The Paul of the Bible is a state everyone will attain. And while in that state, David will reveal your true identity. Enter any state and you become that state. While in the state of wealth, everything you touch turns to gold. In the state of success, you could turn a failing business into a successful one. For in the state of success, you cannot fail. You are not a success or a failure, but the occupant of a state. Although you remain untouched by any state, when you enter one, you express it. Put yourself into the state of health, and you must express health. 
enter the state of fame, and no power can stop you from expressing it. And when you enter the state of Paul, David will stand before you and say, A face like my face shall receive you. A man like unto me thou shalt love and be loved by forever. A hand like this hand shall open the gate of a new life for you. See the Christ stand. You will be looking into the face of David, the Lord's anointed. And when he calls you Father, you know who you are. For no one knows who the Father is except the Son. And no one knows who the Son is except the Father. David, your son, sets you free. For he is the son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, whose revealed name is I Am. Everyone who says, I Am, is the father of that eternal youth called David. Awake, O sleeper. And remember eternity, the son of Jesse, for only he can reveal you as God the Father. This is the greatest story ever told. It is an incredible story of a transformation, a metamorphosis. Meta means change, and morphos means form. So metamorphosis means a radical change of form. This is true, for the being you are destined to be could not function in a body of flesh and blood. You will move into an entirely new age. It is a new world, and in it, you need a new form. The form is spirit. Yet you have a human face, a human voice, and human hands. That is the form I saw when I stood in the presence of the risen Lord and answered his question, what is the greatest thing in the world? In the words of Paul, as faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. At that moment, he embraced me and I assumed his incredible form. Since that time, we have not been separated or divorced. Although while I wear the body of flesh and blood, I must be subject to all of its weaknesses and limitations. But when I take it off this time, I will be one with that one body who is gathering all. Everyone will be saved because everyone is God and God is saving himself. At the present time, you do not know you are God, but you will know it when you enter the state called Paul. For in that state, the revelations unfold and you too will say, I did not get it from a man. It came through a revelation of Jesus Christ. He unveiled himself in me as my very being. Now I know there is no other. So I say to my friend, your revelation is true. You have been called and elected. You have been chosen, not by men, but by God, which is the definition of a saint in scripture. How could any man make another man a saint? The idea is stupid. When you are called, you are sainted. When you are elected, you are sainted. When you are chosen, you are sainted. And no man looking at you could ever see you as a saint. You are still capable of losing your temper and being violent. That means nothing. Be everything that you are, for you are already redeemed by reason of your experiences. So, the characters of scripture are not historical. To see anyone, including Jesus Christ, as a person who walked this earth, is to see truth tempered to the weakness of your soul and unable to bear the strong light of revelation. Jesus Christ is the perfect state into which you are all moving, and in that state, Scripture unfolds to reveal you as God. And who is He? He is your own wonderful human imagination. If all things are possible to your imagination, then all things are possible to imagine. How would you act if God imagined you as you want to be? How would you feel? What would you do? Then do it. Feeling its reality, have faith in your imaginal act. Desire is your hope. Your imaginal act is your subjective appropriation of the hope you want to objectify. Now faith is the link between God's power and your desire. He doesn't question your desire. He who is all creative power and know-how simply gives it to you. That is Christ, he who is defined as the power of God and the wisdom of God. Now, if you test God and prove to yourself that imagination does create reality, tell others. If they try it and it works for them, does it really matter what the world thinks? If they think the idea is insane, it won't be the first time. They thought Einstein was insane. There are those who think I am. That's perfectly all right. 
for the day will come when God will reveal himself in each individual. And then that one will move from the state of Saul to Paul. There is no other God, for God became man by assuming all of his human weaknesses and limitations. God is not pretending he is you. When he became your breath, he had to take your unique qualities upon himself. That was his crucifixion. No man was nailed upon a crossbar. Your body is the cross Christ wears. He is buried in you and will rise in you. His tomb is the human skull where he lays dreaming. So awake, you sleeper, who forgot eternity in the pursuit of the moment. Although this moment seems so real, you are its reality and the central being of Scripture. The fundamental purpose of Scripture is metamorphosis, the radical transformation of man into God. And God has a son, formed by his experiences as the human imagination and personified as David of biblical fame. David is he who is a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. He is not a historical character, but an eternal state which appears at the end of your journey into the world of death. The world may think they have found David's tomb, but they will never find any historical evidence concerning these characters of scripture because they are all spiritual states personified. You will pass through these states to discover through revelation that you are the author of the Bible. Just imagine, Paul's letters came first. He called them my gospel. They are Paul's good news of salvation, which came through revelation. Paul's 13 letters were written first and all the other books were based upon them. But who is Paul? Everyone who enters the state of fulfillment. One day you will enter the state known as Paul. But right now you are Saul, seeking the cause of life, not knowing it is your very self. In the books of Samuel and Kings, we are told that Saul tried to kill the very one who could reveal him to himself. But the revelation could not come until his name was changed to Paul. Even though today you are very much a lady, you will eventually become the Paul of Scripture. But in that realm, you are above the organization of sex, as Paul tells us. In Christ, there is no bond, no free, no male, no female, no Jew, no Greek, for all are one in Christ. Your true identity is not male or female, but man. And man is God and God is man. As Blake so beautifully put it, Thou art a man, God is no more. Thine own humanity learn to adore. Tonight, set your hope fully upon this grace that is coming to you. For Christ in you is your hope of glory. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? Test yourself and see, for all things are possible to him. Think of something you would like that reason says you cannot have. Now assume it's yours. Your assumption, though false in the sense that it is denied by your reasonable mind, if persisted in, will harden into fact. You do not need to know the means that will be employed to bring your assumption to pass. All you are required to do is persist in your assumption and allow your own wonderful human imagination to give it to you. All things are possible to your imagination. It's up to you to provide the necessary link between your assumption and its fulfillment. That link is faith. Having assumed your desire is fulfilled, your faith in that assumption will cause it to harden into fact. That is the law. Test this law, and if you prove it in performance, it will not matter to you if it seems irrational to others. Tonight, leave this auditorium in the assumption that you are what you would like to be. And if tomorrow your assumption can be seen as fact by the world round about you, then you have found Christ, he who is within you, as your hope of glory. Man is forever coming up with fantastic ideas like going to the moon. At the time, the idea seemed impossible, yet in time, man does go to the moon. So you see, nothing is impossible to God, but nothing. Simply name that which seems so impossible to you, then assume that you have it. Walk in the assumption it is now an objective fact and see how God works. I tell you in a way that you do not know and you could not possibly devise. 
you will be led across a bridge of incident to the fulfillment of that state. All you have to do is ignore the evidence of your outer senses and go about your own wonderful business, assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Your assumption, instead of receding into the past, will advance into the future and you will walk right into its fulfillment. Accept what I am telling you tonight and you will be on your way towards the state called Paul. He tried his best to persuade his own friends to believe what happened to him in the synagogue. Christianity is not a new religion, but the fulfillment of Judaism. It's as old as the faith of Abraham, older even than the synagogue. The promise was fulfilled in the state of Judaism, interpreted to Jews, who then organized it into a separate religion. But there could be no Christianity without Judaism. Many a Christian would like to divorce the two books and put the Old Testament aside. But there could be no New Testament without the Old, for the New is only the fulfillment of the promise made to Abraham. You are destined to be told, as the lady was, that you are Paul. And the chances are you will be just as shocked as she is when she looks into the mirror and sees a mother and a mother-to-be and a wife who may argue with her husband and be short of money once in a while. These weaknesses are part of your garment of flesh and blood. But at the end of time, your new body of love, woven without seams, will be ready for occupancy. Then you will take off this body of limitation and opacity and assume your new body of life. If, however, you have not reached the state of Paul, when you leave this body, you will find yourself in another one just like this one, in a section of time best suited for the work yet to be done in you. Don't think you are going to move chronologically from one year to the next, for it can be any year, be it the year 1000 or 3000. Whatever year you find yourself in, you will feel perfectly normal there, and things will seem quite natural. These bodies of death belong to this age, and regardless of what year you find yourself in, you will wear the same body of slavery, where you must perform all of its functions. No matter how powerful you may be, you cannot command anyone to perform your body's functions for you. Therefore, you are its slave while you remain in the state of Saul. Only when you move into the state of Paul can the drama unfold and set you free. Don't think that you have to be the perfect specimen of a man, judged by human standards, to arrive in state of Paul. Although weak and limited as you are now, Strive to know the truth of Scripture, and one day, when you least expect it, you will find yourself cast in the central role, as everything said of Jesus Christ will unfold within you, and you will know who you are. If there is any Christ other than He who is in us, who rose and continues to rise in the individual, He is false, for the true Christ is within you. The universal cosmic Christ became humanity. He rose and continues to rise in individuals. One day he will rise within you to reveal you as God the Father. The relationship of father-son was established before that the world was, only we forgot. This is simply the return of the memory of God, all within the individual. Now let us go into the silence.